In order to summon evil, you gotta have a ritual. And that's what this installment of The Countdown is all about. Starting with Australia's effective surprise hit of the summer, Talk to Me. This is M.L. Miller Frights, Best in Horror Countdown, 2022 through 2023. Counting down the best in horror within the window of October 1st, 2022 through September 30th, 2023. Number 8. Talk to Me was released on July 28th, 2023. It's available on demand from A24 Films. It's directed by Danny Philippou and Michael Philippou, and written by Danny Philippou, Michael Philippou, and Kit Erhart Bruce. Shortly after losing her mother to an apparent suicide, Mia, played by Sophie Wilde, snubs her father and chooses to spend most of her time with her best friend Jade played by Alexandra Jensen, and her family. When Mia finds out about a new game becoming a viral sensation involving a candle, a plaster, hand, and a ritual that begins with the words, Talk to me, she has to play it for herself. But once Mia plays the game, she becomes obsessed with the possibility of using the game to communicate with her mother's spirit. When the game goes horribly wrong the second time she plays it, Mia and all of those she holds dear to her heart begin to pay the ultimate price. Okay, right off the bat, I will tell you that Talk To Me is an effective horror film. It has plenty of great things to talk about, and I'm going to get into that in a bit. But I have to cut through the shit and say that while it is good, it's far from original. Talk To Me is the latest in the ever-growing line of curse horror films that works so well in The Ring, then in The Grudge, then again in It Follows, and then again last year in Smile, and finally again last month in The Boogeyman. In every one of these films, a ritual is performed, either willingly or non-willingly, and the central character is cursed, pulling all of the cursed's loved ones in peril, ultimately leading to that person to come face to face with the curse itself. Occasionally, the cursed person comes out alive, having beaten the curse, but more often than not, Despite the fact that they think the curse has been taken care of, they end up succumbing to that curse in the final seconds of the film. If you don't think that plot sounds familiar, then you probably haven't seen The Ring, The Grudge, It Follows, Smile, The Boogeyman, and are the prime candidate Blumhouse is hoping will flock to theaters and see Talk To Me. Talk To Me does a lot of things really well, but it's far, far, far from something fresh and new. That said, Talk To Me is extremely well acted, lead Sophie Wilde is a star in the making, and is a powerhouse of exuding raw emotion. Most of the film rests on her slender shoulders, and she does a great job of carrying the weight. Hers is a complex character, and one that ends up not being very flattering, but still, Wilde delivers it all confidently. I also have to acknowledge her co-stars, Alexandra Jensen, as Mia's best friend Jade, and young Joe Bird as Jade's impressionable little brother, Riley. Both keep up with Wilde's powerful performance and serve much more than fodder to rack up the body count. You care for these three well-developed characters, snatching the audience's investment and making the movie sting more when bad things happen to them. Talk to me is much gorier than most mainstream horror films. Most likely this is because it was made outside of the U.S., Australian films are known to be harsher and grittier than Hollywood fare, so real damage is done, and there's all kinds of mortal wounds to prove it. There are scenes that made me wince and curl my toes, which normally never occurs in a theatrically released horror film. But on top of the potent gore, there are some very strong scares occurring throughout. Yes, there's an initial opening scene filled with shock and awe, but the film takes its time to lull the viewer into comfort and might seem a bit tedious until the first ritual is actually shown. But once the hand is shaken, the scares come fast and never really let up until the haunting final scene. Talk To Me manages to use a simple ritual and repeat it, yet still make it feel varied enough to sustain the scares until the last act. It all works, and writer, filmmakers Danny Philippou and Michael Philippou not only know how to build up a very tense moment, but end it with payoffs that resonate. Being a film geared towards kids, there's an overabundant time dedicated to cell phones, viral videos, and absent parents. Save for a few scenes with Miranda Otto as Jade and Riley's mom, 
and ones depicting Mia's grieving father and the spirit of her dead mother, parents are rarely in these kids' lives at all. Nope, this story consists of kids making mistakes, then trying to fix those mistakes on their own, resulting in making things much worse. Now, horror films geared towards the younger crowd usually fail to interest me, call me an old fart, but seeing kids hold up their phones to catch something horrible happening instead of running in fear is something I still fail to comprehend. That said, Talk To Me utilizes the viral sensation of the game and the younger generations addicted to the online world to the film's advantage using it as a mechanism to draw these kids into playing the game itself. I have to give it to Talk To Me for being extremely marketable. I could totally see Mattel releasing a Talk To Me hand this fall as an alternative to their Ouija boards. It's a smart scheme that will most likely lure all kinds of tweens to buy one for their next sleepover. The plaster hand looks to be some kind of high school art project scribbled with gibberish in order to make it look worn and ominous. It's creepy. It's participatory. It'll be available at all Hot Topic gift shops across the country. Good on this movie for actually centering around an object that could be easily reproduced and bought by the masses. What kind of message is Talk To Me trying to give? Not sure. At the beginning, Mia fails to be able to muster the courage to put a kangaroo hit by a car on the road out of its misery, choosing to leave it behind to die alone and in pain. Happening so early in the film, this scene seems to be key to Mia's inability to follow through in absolutes in her life. We later find out that Mia doesn't want to believe that her mom killed herself, and she believes that there has to be something else she doesn't know about that was the cause of her demise. In the end, Mia is again given the choice to, quote-unquote, kill the kangaroo, and it's left up to interpretation whether she does so or not. So while the film says a lot about online addiction, peer pressure, and the reckless tendency of youth to be fascinated with death, which feels so far away from them, it also simply works as a character study about the conflict between what you see and what you feel. Or is the title, Talk to Me, a simple message one might find in commercials advocating for parents to communicate and try to relate with their children? Could be. Had Mia's father tried to talk with Mia harder, Maybe she would never have been drawn in to try the game in the first place. In this case, the game could represent drugs, sex, online addiction again, or any other type of thing that parents tend to find hard to talk to their kids about. Miranda Otto's mother character seems slightly more successful at talking to her kids about these issues. Beyond that, this trend of curse-themed horror might have a deeper meaning than one might think. All through the film, I was thinking about how, in all of these cursed films, the protagonist is usually cursed with something they've done, and they seem to try to shake the stigma of that curse for the duration of the rest of the movie. Could these cursed films be a response to cancellation culture, where someone does something believed to be morally wrong by the masses, then finds themselves ostracized and secluded from society because of it? Do the endings of these films, which suggest that while there may be ways to combat the curse, ultimately teach us that those cursed, aka the cancelled, are destined to succumb to the curse and thus are ultimately erased from the public by the accepted consensus of the masses? All interesting questions, ones I'd love to talk about more and most likely will when the next curse film is released, most likely when Exorcist Believer comes out. Talk to Me is a movie worth talking about and supporting because of its thematic heft, strong performances, shocking scares, and ballsy gore. Talk to Me is a film I'd definitely recommend you to go out and support in theaters. But those thinking this is something original are fooling themselves. The extensive ritual performed in From Black is as horrifying as what it brings forth, making this little horror film worth a mention in the countdown. From Black was released on April 28, 2023. It's streaming on Shudder. It's directed by Thomas Marchese and written by Jessa Flower and Thomas Marchese. From Black follows the plight of recovering drug addict Cora, played by Anna Camp, whose child went missing while she was drugged up a few years ago. While attempting to cope with the loss in a support group, she meets Abel, played by John Ailes, who himself has suffered the great loss of his daughter. 
Abel is compelled to speak with Cora after she opens up for the first time in group with her sad story. Turns out Abel knows a way for Cora to see her daughter again. She just has to perform an unconventional ritual and make a deal with the demon. While Cora is extremely skeptical that Abel is a loon, he convinces her to hear him out, and when she witnesses something unexplained in one of their practice rituals, Cora becomes convinced that Abel's proposition might actually lead to her being reunited with her daughter. From Black is split into two tales, one that follows Cora's long path to learn and eventually perform the ritual, and the other the bloody aftermath where Cora's sister, Bray, played by Jennifer LaFleur, investigates what just went on during the ritual where Cora was found in a room marked with odd symbols and covered in blood that is not her own. While I was unnerved and my emotions certainly moved, I wasn't very scared of From Black. The film spends an extremely long time focusing on the ritual itself. Reminiscent of another ritual process-oriented film, A Dark Song, which itself was an extremely serious and morose little number released a few years ago, the bulk of From Black involves Cora being taught by Abel how to perform the ritual as she has to do it herself and can't receive help from anyone else once the process is started. I appreciated the attention to detail involving the specific type of salt needed and the focus on spiritualism. Like all good deal with the devil stories, nothing comes without a price, and the story has a wonderful way of distracting you with investment into Cora's hopes and the little details of the ritual so that it can pull a very solid shockeroo towards the end. Anna Camp is a very strong actress. I've only seen her from her brief stint on True Blood and the few scenes I've seen from the Pitch Perfect movies. This seems like a real departure from some of the stuff she has done lately, and her performance as Cora is indeed heartbreaking. There's one detail about her performance that bothered me, though. Some people, when they cry, they pull their lips back, and it almost looks like they're smiling. There were scenes in this movie where it looked like Camp was smiling inappropriately during highly dramatic moments. I knew she wasn't meaning to do this, but it distracted me enough to be taken out of the drama, so I thought it was worth mentioning. The demon itself, with its ram horns and shielded face, is indeed imposing. It's a full-body costume and looks fantastic. From afar, it looks like the demon is wearing a pot on its head, but its dramatic mannerisms helped me shake this goofy observation. Towards the beginning, there are a few moments where the sound design wasn't able to make the demon's speech understandable. It whispers when it speaks, and it just didn't feel clear in those first moments that we saw the monster. Later in the film, the demon's speech is much more discernible, though. I wasn't expecting the feel-good missing kid film of the year from From Black, but it did feel like it took itself a bit too seriously, and the tone really is a downer. From Black is a solid film. It's capably acted, it looks great, with marvelous set design and mysterious cinematography. It's got an interesting story, and it even sets up a mystery that is compelling to follow. The stakes are high, and the climax is pretty awesome especially the ending. Most of that is because Anna Camp is a strong actress. And on top of it all, the film makes the ritual and the demon itself intriguing and worth paying attention to. The main problem I had with this film is that it is utterly joyless. Like many modern quote-unquote elevated horror films like Midsummer, Hereditary, The Babadook, and a bunch of other lower-budgeted films that attempt to capture the tone of those first three in particular, From Black never allows for a moment of brevity a minute to have some fun being scared, or simply let any of the cast smile. It's an extremely depressing situation Cora finds herself in, and I understand that drug addiction and missing children are not real fodder for joke material. But films like this which wallow in the sorrow are often very hard to endure. There are little things about this movie that bothered me. Cora immediately picks up how to draw all of these symbols from a very short time of teaching towards the end. I also thought that while John Ailes is convincingly desperate and overcome with emotion in parts, there are other moments towards the climax that I could feel him trying to act instead of simply acting. Jennifer LaFleur, on the other hand, is wonderful all the way through as a sister who is sick of the chaos surrounding her own sister, but still struggles to love her. If you're in a sour mood and kind of want to sink lower, I'd recommend From Black because investing in these characters surely means that you're going to have your emotions wrung by the time the credits roll. It does a good job of depicting the sadness and sorrow, but still it offers up little more than that. I'm going to recommend From Black cautiously, because I think it is a noble stab at dramatic horror. 
As always, feel free to agree, disagree, or how about you play along at home and give me your own picks for your favorite horror movies. It's October, so let's talk horror. Come back tomorrow for the next level in the Best in Horror countdown. Be sure to hit all of those pertinent bells and whistles down below, and you'll never miss a post. Happy Halloween, folks.